Well, I was going to say good morning, but I think we're in the afternoon at this stage. Um, first of all, I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm the last of four speakers, um, and that you've been listening now for, well, an hour and a half uh, to presentations. So uh, the warning I give myself is I better be interesting, or people will start to either fall asleep uh, or start leaving. Um, I want to um, have a slightly different focus from the previous three speakers, and I agree with an awful lot of what they said. Uh, and often when I'm talking about energy, I, I end up talking about the renewable challenge, the, uh, the need to decarbonize Ireland and to move away from our reliance on fossil fuels. But I have a slightly different focus today. Uh, this session on energy and the economy needs to be put in the context of the overall theme of what's being debated this week, what to do to save our economy. The Irish economic model is broken, uh, and we know that now, and I think most of us know why. Uh, dishonest government and flawed policy, blatantly irresponsible regulation, and perhaps most importantly, the creation of a comfort zone for so many who expected the unsustainable boom times to continue indefinitely. Like every person, I'm angry as hell that it has come to this and want those responsible for policy failures to be held to account. Yet surely that sentiment and the thinking and that thinking should now be yesterday's story because it's wasted energy that we can't afford. It's a bit like squabbling over who caused a war when you're losing the battle on all fronts. It's at seminars like this one that we must try to turn that justifiable anger and negative adrenaline into a motivating force to, to drive a desire for new thinking, big thinking, that can create solutions and renewal. The kind of response that only comes from crisis. When one is forced to change in order to survive. And that's where Ireland is right now. We must change our ways, and that change must come from the top, or people will force radical change from the bottom up. The problem with our government's response to the economic crisis to date is that it has been dominated by a narrow focus on trying to solve two giant problems, banking and a frightening and growing budgetary deficit. Bank recapitalization, cutbacks in expenditure, and increased taxation seem to be the only big policy solutions on the table. These measures are necessary, if painful, but they cannot be the limit of the state's response to where we are now. As well as cutting back, we must find ways to stimulate new economic activity and improve conditions for existing businesses to allow them to survive. Energy policy is a key component in providing a more competitive and attractive environment for doing business. And more importantly, it can be central to an exciting new stimulus plan for economic reformation in Ireland, as well as a plan that is needed in response to climate change. I want to focus on two issues relating to energy policy. The first is the cost of energy in Ireland, in particular electricity, and its impact on competitiveness and job losses. Second, and more interestingly, I want to address how big thinking and state leadership coming from government and from the state itself in the energy sector can play an exciting role in repositioning the Irish economy and be a good news story which is desperately needed for employment, sustainability, and a driver for new economic growth. First of all, on cost. The cost of doing business in Ireland is clearly too high. It's costing us jobs every single day. High energy, utility, and labor costs are driving businesses either out of business or out of Ireland. Either way, the consequences are dire for the hundreds of people who are losing employment every day. And on Tuesday, we, we got another tragic reminder in Shannon from Element 6, who said simply, Ireland is too expensive for us to continue to do business here. If you think I'm exaggerating, listen to what the IMF said in June. In recent years, Ireland has become the most expensive location in the Eurozone. Certainly, this is the case when it comes to energy costs. SEI this week confirmed yet again that the business sector that in the business sector, Irish electricity prices are above the EU average in all bands, 
ranging from between 12 percent up to 38 percent above the EU average. Domestic household electricity prices are also far above the EU average. And I would suggest that the slides you saw earlier are a little bit misleading because they take into account tax as well as the actual cost of producing energy. And if you take tax out of it, we're far, far more expensive relative to other European countries. So let's be clear on this. Energy, particularly electricity, but also gas, is too expensive in Ireland and it's costing us dearly as we flounder to cope with recession. Today, I challenge all stakeholders in the energy sector, but particularly the CER, government, and semi-state companies such as the ESB and Borgash, to prioritize achieving significant reductions in the relative cost of energy in Ireland as a priority measure above all else for the next two years, while Ireland needs to pick itself up. The truth is, that in the Irish energy market, consumers and businesses continue to pay the price for facilitating new entrants into the marketplace, yet we are seeing no direct benefits from competition in terms of lower energy costs. It's about time we made competition work by measuring its success, not only by the number of new players in the market, but also by how the energy market is delivering to consumers and energy users. I do not believe that the CER has given sufficient priority to energy users and consumers, whether they be businesses or households. And they have allowed the, the price review mechanisms to be dominated by large energy companies and by a government policy that supports new entrants into the market by keeping prices high. Ireland has changed, and so too must the priorities for the um, uh, energy regulator in terms of delivering for the wider economy in a totally changed marketplace. So what can be done in terms of practical measures to bring down energy prices? The most significant factor affecting energy prices in Ireland is global oil prices, and you've heard a lot of talk about that. Due to, to Ireland's high dependency on imported fuel and the knock-on impact of oil prices on other fuel prices, and particular natural, particularly natural gas, um, and the consequences for electricity prices as a result of that. The unprecedented increases granted by the Commission for Energy Regulation this time last year were warranted due to the dramatic rise in the cost of oil, which peaked at $147 a barrel. But since then, the price of oil has dropped and stabilized at around $60 a barrel, a drop of 58% since last July. At the same time, the cost of wholesale gas in the UK has dropped by over 60%. However, in April, regulated prices were only reduced by 12% for gas and 10% for electricity by the CER. I have consistently said that this price reduction was nowhere near where it should have been to deliver fair value for consumers. In the case of gas, I think my contention will be proven correct when we see a further 10 to 12% reduction in the, price of regulated uh, in the regulated price of gas likely to be announced in September following the current price review. Electricity pricing is more complex than gas, and I concede that. And I would like to explore a number of ways in which we might be able to reduce prices by reforming the way in which electricity prices in the Irish market are actually regulated. First of all, there's this issue about fixed maximum pricing first versus setting a ceiling for energy prices. Current legislation orders the energy regulator to set an actual uh, price for ESB electricity and board gosh, gas, gas to Irish householders and in the case of gas, small businesses also. I believe this needs to change to allow the CER to set a maximum price rather than setting actual prices. In other words, let's, let a, let's allow and encourage the ESB and board gosh to compete more aggressively on price, on price with their competitors. We have the ridiculous situation at present where Borgosh and Electricity are offering households significantly cheaper electricity than the ESB, 10 to 15 percent cheaper, which is good news. Yet the ESB are not allowed by the CER to reduce their prices to compete. So we've spent 10 years trying to deliver a competitive marketplace for households, and now we have real competition. The regulator is keeping ESB prices artificially high. The reason given is that board gosh and, uh, and electricity need to be allowed to get a sizable foothold in the marketplace before the ESB should be allowed to compete on price 
for fear they'll drive them out of business. This is nonsense in my view. Eritricity and Borgosh are big, strong companies that are more than capable of fighting a price war with the ESB that can deliver for consumers, small businesses and households. The second area where I think we need to look at a change in regulation is a more controversial area, and that is in relation to carbon charges. Uh, in my view, in the last year, consumers and households have been ripped off in a scandalous way, and they don't even know it's happening. I'll try and explain it, because a lot of people switch off when they start hearing about carbon charges and carbon trading, because they assume that it's sort of too complex to really put into simple language. Well, it's not, and I'll try and explain it. After 2012, all electricity generators will have to purchase what are called carbon credits for every ton of carbon they emit when they're generating power. However, from 2008 to, to 2012, which is the phase-in period before carbon trading begins, the Irish government is giving carbon credits for free, for free, to all generators as we prepare for full carbon trading post-2012. This approach seems reasonable until you consider that power generators are required by regulation to charge energy users for the full value of carbon emitted during generation. So generators get the, credit, uh, get the carbon credits for free, but they're required to charge the full price for those credits when they build their customers. As a result, the average electricity bill for families and businesses and small businesses um, in 2008, sorry, and for all businesses, all energy users in 2008, had a 10% increase directly attributable to carbon charges on their bill. Even though there is no added cost for electricity generators attached to such carbon credits. How many people in this room know that last year you paid an extra 10% on every bill you paid because you're being charged for carbon. That energy generators are being allowed to emit for free. This is a carbon tax by stealth and people don't even know they're paying it. And just in case you don't think it's a significant figure, households and businesses paid in excess of 220 million extra euros last year for carbon on their electricity bills. That's nearly quarter of a billion euros. It is estimated that over the lifetime of the current phase of, carbon allowance, of the carbon allowance credit plan, in other words, from, from 2008 to 2012, electricity generators could make unearned gains as a result of this of up to 1.6 billion euros on the back of consumers. And people say there's nothing we can do to bring down energy prices in Ireland. To their credit, the ESB offered to give back some 300 million euros to offset rising energy prices in the first half of 2009, which directly relates to the windfall profits that they made on the back of, uh, of charging for carbon, which they get for free. However, unfortunately, they have declined to commit to refund any of this carbon windfall profit in 2009 or into the future. And should I say that the other generators outside of the ESB have given nothing back. They've simply pocketed the windfall profits. The CER is clearly uncomfortable with this situation, and I've spoken to him about it on a number of occasions, but states repeatedly that it's up to government to change policy in this area. I'm increasingly of the view that we should consider removing carbon charges from electricity bills altogether until 2012, when all generators will have to pay for carbon allowances anyway under the EU carbon trading mechanisms. We in Fine Gael have repeatedly called on government to recoup this unearned windfall profit through a tax or levy on generators so that we could put a pool of money together to drive investment in renewables to try and bring down efficiencies and bring down the cost of electricity for consumers, but we've got no response. And so that's now, that is now why we're being pushed into looking at trying to call for um, a, a taking carbon charges away from consumers altogether in the context of, of introducing a far fairer uh, and broader based carbon tax uh, into the economy. Getting rid of carbon charges on a temporary basis as an emergency response to recession could reduce electricity costs 
by between 7 and 10 percent overnight in this country for everybody across all sectors. Now, there are some complications and problems with it in terms of its effect on the renewable industry and wind in particular, but we are looking at a PSO to support that industry anyway now. And we give preferential treatment to the wind industry in terms of accepting power from them uh, onto the electricity grid. Um, I wanted to talk about the, um, the, uh, the regulated uh, 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 cost for um, uh, people using the ESB's transmission assets, but I think I might run out of time if I do that, and I'm not going to get to the points that I want to make at the end, which are far more positive ones. So um, if people are interested in that, maybe they'll have a look at my speech later on or I'll talk to them about it. But in my view, there are savings to be made in transmission costs. In other words, the costs that all of the uh, energy generators and energy suppliers are charged to use ESB infrastructure. Because of the way in which that's regulated, which gives the ESB a guaranteed return to allow them to make future investments in the grid, um, consumers are paying more than they should, in my view, for, um, for this element of electricity pricing. And that is something that can change. The overriding, the overriding point that I want to make on electricity prices is that anybody who tells you that there is nothing we can do to reduce energy prices because we are just simply exposed to the international markets is either ignorant of the facts compromised by self-interest or deliberately misleading you. There are plenty of things that can be done to bring prices down and we should get on with it because Ireland needs it. I want to turn now to the role of the energy sector in providing stimulus for economic activity and development. When it comes to energy projects we should think big and we as a state should be taking the lead. Fine Gael has recently launched a policy document entitled Rebuilding Ireland, and I don't want this, this to become a promo for that. But it, but it does map out how ambitious thinking and genuine reform can fund an 18 billion euro stimulus package aimed at building, building modern infrastructure upon which we can grow and reposition a new economy. This project will not solve all of our economic woes, far from it but it can provide real cause for optimism and it can provide a project that people can start believing in. Not only will we need to employ tens of thousands of people in the construction phase of such a plan, but more importantly, we can create the opportunity for hundreds of thousands to benefit from the new infrastructure proposed. We are primarily talking about a massive investment program in telecommunications infrastructure, water infrastructure, and most importantly, energy infrastructure through a modern, smart electricity grid. This stimulus package can be funded without increasing national debt or government borrowing. Instead, we propose to fund the investment program through capital raised by new and existing state companies. My political party and government wants the opportunity to totally restructure the semi-state sector in Ireland. You've heard a lot of talk this week about the need to restructure the public sector, to reform politics. But we also need to look at the companies, the commercial companies that this country owns and how we manage that portfolio of, of companies to deliver for their shareholder, the state, you and I. So that the country creates a portfolio of state-owned companies fit for purpose in a modern new economy equipped for all of the new challenges that we face. The state has created state companies in the past that have delivered hugely successful projects through the expertise and ambition within such companies. And we still have many such people. The ESB was set up in 1927 as the state was trying to find its feet and reinforce our national independence. Two years later, in 1929, the Shannon Scheme at Ardna Krusha began construction. The state committed a third of our entire income to complete this highly controversial piece of energy infrastructure that proved to be such a success in giving our, uh, the new Ireland at the time the capacity to generate our own power and, our stand, and stand on our own two feet. And it's still operating today. Likewise, rural electri 
electrification 30 years later was delivered by the state in a hugely impressive way. We are at another Ardna Krusha moment for this country. We must prepare to commit to ambitious projects that can create the basis for, you, for new economic growth. Any country that simply tries to hold on to the status quo when under pressure like Ireland is now will shrink and continue to suffer. The one great competitive advantage that this small country has is that we have the ability to adapt and transform ourselves quickly. Unlike economies like Germany and Britain and the United States, we must use that competitive advantage now. The opportunities in the energy sector are exciting with the right leadership from government. And let me give you a few examples of what, what, what we would propose to do in government if given the opportunity. And I'll finish on that. I know there are time concerns. Fine Gael, in the bioenergy area, would merge Quilche and Bordenamona to create a strong, strategically placed bioenergy and land management company. This company would own almost 10%, almost 10% of the land mass of Ireland and could over time manage the transition away from peat to wood biomass as a fuel source using Quilche Wood and Bordenamona power stations. It would develop an ambitious rollout of combined heat and power plants in public buildings across the country. Do you know that the state currently spends 300 million euros a year importing fossil fuel to heat public buildings? 300 million euros a year to simply heat public buildings. This is money that should stay in Ireland and can stay in Ireland if we deliver what I'm talking about. Fine Gael wants to create a new state company called Smart Grid that would be an enhanced but independent ESB networks that would own and manage a modern electricity network capable of facilitating microgeneration facilities in people's homes so that people could sell power back onto the grid, that can deliver a vast electric transport charging infrastructure for the most ambitious carbon saving projects that the state has ever embarked upon, transforming our transport fleet from carbon based fuels onto a, an electric network. Ireland can do this. And we need to get to work on it. Smart Grid can deliver new energy storage projects and much, much more in terms of the kind of wind challenge that we were talking about earlier and so on. To be fair, much of this is already happening through the Grid 25 plans and ESB commitments in, in terms of the investment program that they're embarking on. But we can be more ambitious. Fine Gael wants to rationalise and sell off assets that are no longer of strategic interest to the state within the ownership of state companies. And this is a bit controversial. But if we, but if we can't think controversial, controversially in times of crisis, when can we think? It is immoral, in my view, to be holding on to state assets that we don't need when there are new projects that need finance and at a time when we are cutting back on vital public and social services because of a lack of resources. This is, a fun, this is fundamentally about selling old assets to build new ones and repositioning the role of the state for tomorrow's Ireland and tomorrow's economy. Selling Borgash energy, for example, has been mentioned as an obvious opportunity for government to raise much needed funds, and I agree with that. Why does the state need to hold ownership of a second large energy company competing with the ESB? It's my view that we should ensure that all gas pipeline infrastructure remains in state ownership and so Borgosh would need to be split before it was sold. And that the ownership and management of that gas pipeline infrastructure would probably be put under the management of a new smart grid or air grid as lots of synergies exist between gas and electricity infrastructure. However, the state could raise up to a billion euros by selling the remaining assets in Borgosh Energy without compromising strategic interest in terms of pipeline infrastructure. I will leave you with one final thought. We as a nation spend 6.5 billion euros every year on imported fossil fuels to generate power and heat and to drive our transport fleet. And that bill is only going in one direction. 
with the right thinking and proper planning, we can spend the vast majority of this sum of money at home, here in Ireland, if we exploit our own natural and renewable resources in an intelligent, smart way. We can create the smart electricity grid that facilitates power generation from wind, from wave, from biomass, from waste, from microgeneration, and from conventional power plant, and distri distributes it in a more cost-effective way. We will be forced to do this anyway, as the world moves past oil peak and imported carbon-based fuel uh, resources become more scarce and more expensive. Energy, energy, its generation, distribution, its cost and its management will be one of the key determining factors as to when and how Ireland picks itself up from the mire of recession and becomes a country and an economy that we can be proud of again. Thank you.